This is an advanced class. If you are in the wrong class, please leave and see your advisor. At first glance, typography in the Catskills doesn't seem to be much different than in other parts of the world. But to the trained typographic eye, certain regional trends begin to emerge. Just as in the metropolitan design centers like Paris, New York, and Los Angeles, certain stylistic conventions hold sway. So for a moment, to train your eyes, let's see if we can spot Catskills regional typography when we see it, and then perhaps we can begin to identify its characteristics. Just yell when you think you see something quintessentially Catskills. Old style or Garald typefaces, named by combining the names of French punch cutter Claude Garamond and the printer and publisher Aldous Minutius, which feature a humanistic stress and bracketed serifs, are exceptionally readable and elegant and are often used to convey dependability and sophistication. Modern or Didone typefaces with their vertical stress, razor thin serifs and high contrast aren't as generally useful but are very elegant and are popular in the worlds of fashion and luxury goods. Sans serif typefaces first emerged in the early 19th century and gained much popularity in the 20th century mainly as a move towards an international aesthetic in typography. Now, this example, as some of you may have realized, is from here in the Catskills. Designer unknown. In order to make it clear when we're looking at examples of regional typography, I've developed a little logo that I'll include on those slides. When you see that, you know you're looking at Catskills type. But let's see how you do on your own, without the logo. A quiz, if you will. Let's look at German black letter or Fraktur, which dates from around 1450. I don't know why there's a lady lying down on the New York Times logo. Next slide. That's right. Or let's look at the fairly obscure trend known as unicase, where uppercase forms and lowercase forms are used together. See the uppercase B and the lowercase E and the ambiguous forms of the V and the I? This is a very nice example of unicase typography, as is this. And yes, that's a local example, so you're getting the hang of this. Maybe I don't need the logo. Typography and design are increasingly important in the political arena. The 2008 Obama campaign's graphic design savvy is cited as an important factor in Obama's victory. His use of the Gotham typeface was considered such a vibrant part of his identity that in 2012, a special version of Gotham was commissioned by the re-election campaign, Gotham with serifs added. Locally, Frank Stapleton attempted a similar use of a strong sans-serif identity in his 2013 town council campaign in the township of Olive, coupled with a more conservative color scheme to pull in the Republican vote, although his campaign was not successful. Mitt Romney, meanwhile, also had a very striking and coordinated design in place for his campaign, although it was unsuccessful. This design, with its large R, may have been on the mind of my friend local politician Linda Burkhart in her recent bid for Olive Town Board. So, what makes Catskills typography unique? What makes a Catskills style? I'm sorry. There we go. Maybe we can do without the logo for a while. What makes our regional type so special, so unique? There are some instances of Catskills typography that are simply sui generis, like this and this, and don't seem to hint at a particular trend so much as a unique genius at work. There are, however, some undeniable movements afoot, like the legendary Phoenicia G. Most of you will be familiar with the lowercase g as it typically appears. In Phoenicia, New York, however, a trend has taken hold. Note the withered proportions of the bowl. After seeing this in use in a few places in my hometown of Phoenicia, I have dubbed this phenomenon the Phoenicia G. I also find the unexpected use of white space in this sign intriguing in a Zen sort of way. Two other trends, not specific to any one town in the Catskills, have occurred to me in my studies. Let's look at two successful book cover designs that play with themes of hiding and revealing. I believe something similar, albeit with a strong Catskillian flavor, is going on here. 
And this radical upending of traditional notions of readability forms the basis of a trend that I would call the Catskills What Does This Even Say trend. This is Fleischmann's Realty, just up the road from where I live. And there are other more subtle ways of making the viewer work hard for their nugget of meaning, such as abandoning tired old conventions of word breaks and spelling, or whatever is happening here. But by far, the most prevalent typographic tendency in the Catskills again seems to start out as an extension of a popular graphic design trope, the backwards letter. Where a letter or letters is flipped along its vertical axis to become a mirror image of itself. Sometimes it's hard to spot. Here's New World Home Cooking in Socrates. Look closer at that W. Sometimes the axis of rotation is the horizontal axis check out the upside-down S. Or this truly unusual example from Ackerd, New York. After scratching my head for a while over the extraneous inclusion of the Target logo, I wondered what was going on with those C's. And then it hit me. The C is made from an upside-down G. Try that on Madison Avenue. At any rate, we're close to wrapping it up here. Before we look at our last example, my favorite, which has lots of upside-down letters and all sorts of other oddities, I want to leave you with this quote from Robert Bringhurst, a poet and scholar of typography. In a badly designed book, the letters mill and stand like starving horses in a field. In a book designed by rote, they sit like stale bread and mutton on the page. In a well-made book, where designer, compositor, and printer have all done their jobs, no matter how many thousands of lines and pages, the letters are alive. They dance in their seats. Sometimes they rise and dance in the margins and aisles. This last example is the opposite of stale bread. In fact, it's from the incredibly delicious Sunrise Bagels in Kingston, New York, and if this type doesn't rise and dance, I don't know what does. Thank you, and good night, class dismissed.